Hello, welcome to Political Dharma. It is February 24th, 2024. I'm Alan Zundel, your host, and in this week's stories, an influential caucus of the Libertarian Party rejects independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as its presidential nominee, but both RFK and independent presidential candidate Cornell West make progress in ballot access in the states. And then finally, I'm going to have a few things to say about the major party primaries going on this weekend. But first, I have a correction to make about one of last week's stories, the one about the RFK ad that played at the Super Bowl. I said that the Super Bowl reached about 1 million viewers. Well, several people called me out on that number as the game actually reached over 123 million viewers. So the ad was even more effective in reaching people than I indicated. I regret the error. My field is in politics, not in football. And really the only thing I know about the Super Bowl this year is that Taylor Swift was there. (laughs) On to this week's stories. I've been talking in recent episodes about how Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is considering pursuing the nomination of the Libertarian Party, which is the largest minor party in the United States. But on February 11th, Aaron Harris, the chair of the Mises Caucus of the Libertarian Party, shot down this idea. He posted a statement on the website of the caucus disputing that the caucus backed Kennedy. Harris said the caucus had already endorsed and planned to work hard to nominate Michael Richtenwald, an author and academic not much known to the general public. Harris said they, quote, firmly oppose any strategy that would rent out our party's place on any state's ballot to RFK, or indeed any candidate who has so many disqualifying deviations from the essential principles of libertarianism, end quote. Harris goes on to say that past history has shown that running well-known candidates does not necessarily help the party. He added that even if running RFK did increase party numbers, that, quote, millions of Americans will forever associate the LP with RFK's policies, end quote, thus changing the character of the party. Well, what is the Mises Caucus? Here's a clip explaining that from the YouTube channel of Reason TV. The Libertarian Party is under new management, tweeted Angela McArdle shortly after she became the National Committee's new chair at its 2022 annual convention in Reno, which was attended by more than a thousand delegates from around the country. And I hate making promises because I sound like a scumbag politician, but I will move heaven and earth to make this thing functional and not embarrassing for you. We are going to change the country. McArdle is part of the Mises Caucus, which swept all the leadership roles and is now in complete control of the nation's third largest political party. Mises Caucus supporters say they want to make the Libertarian Party libertarian again and that it should no longer be concerned about offending progressives or Beltway establishment types and shouldn't be afraid to reach out to the coalition that elected Donald Trump. Despite the group's name, they're most heavily influenced not by Austrian economist Ludwig von Mises, but by his student, Murray Rothbard, who, like Mises, was a radical capitalist, but unlike his mentor, favored the complete abolition of the state. Given the caucus's control of the party, the nomination of RFK now looks highly unlikely. Petter Schaefer confirmed this in a February 15th article in Politico, RFK Jr.'s Libertarian Play. Schaefer reported the Mises Caucus opposition to RFK as a nominee and added that the caucus controls the majority of the delegates who will vote on the party's presidential nominee at their national convention in May. I reached out to a contact who has been active in the Libertarian Party and he also confirmed that the Mises Caucus is in control and that they are opposed to an RFK nomination. Now, he said he's not a member of the caucus, but he might vote for RFK anyway if he's on the general election ballot. So, while the Mises caucus seems to have shut the door to a Kennedy nomination of the Libertarian Party, there may be a lot of Libertarians who are willing to vote for Kennedy in the general election because they don't feel like the Mises caucus represents their views very well. Given the circumstances, it may look odd that RFK is speaking today at the state convention for the California Libertarian Party. But then independent presidential candidate Cornel West and Green Party candidate Jill Stein 
are also speaking there, and West and Stein are even further from libertarian views than Kennedy is. Most likely, the common interest that brings the libertarians and these other speakers together is their common interest in overcoming barriers to non-major party candidates. Barriers to ballot access, barriers to uh, fair media coverage, and the barrier of an election system that presents voters with a spoiler problem. Uh, these are all areas where combined efforts could help to bring down such barriers. Related to these considerations, the Free and Equal Foundation is a nonprofit focused on opening up candidate debates to more participation and reforming electoral systems. Free and Equal is sponsoring a presidential candidate debate live streamed on Rumble from New York next Thursday, February 29th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Candidates who have confirmed that they are participating include Jill Stein of the Green Party, Chase Oliver and Lars Mamstead, who are seeking the nomination of the Libertarian Party, Claudia de la Cruz, who is seeking the nomination of California's Peace and Freedom Party, and Jasmine Sherman, who is seeking the nominations of both the Green Party and the Peace and Freedom Party. The foundation has also invited independent candidates RFK and Cornell West, but they haven't yet confirmed their attendance. You can find more information on the debate on the Free and Equal website, freeandequal.org. Meanwhile, RFK continues to seek ballot access as an independent candidate. Ballot access is a state-by-state -state struggle as it is states that run elections and each state has its own rules. On Thursday, the Kennedy campaign announced his new We the People party has obtained enough signatures in Hawaii to be recognized for the ballot. Part of his strategy is to have his party recognized in states where that task is easier than getting an independent candidate on the ballot. And two days ago, the American Values 2024 Super PAC, the organization responsible for the RFK Super Bowl ad, held an online town rally to explain their plans and recruit volunteers. AV24 is working on ballot access for Kennedy, independent of Kennedy's official campaign, in order to legally accept larger donations than Kennedy can. At the town rally, staff member Deidre Goldfarb talked about their work on ballot access and revealed that AV24 had already gathered the required numbers of signatures to put Kennedy on the ballot in two states, Arizona and Georgia. I don't think the signatures have been turned in yet because there's been no reports that the states have accepted and validated them. But in Georgia, only 7,500 valid signatures are needed to get them on the ballot, and they've collected over 20,000. So I see Georgia as a sure thing for Kennedy. In Arizona, 42,303 signatures are required, and they've collected 42,488, which is just slightly over the required number. As many of these signatures may not be valid because the signer is not a registered voter or some other reason, AV24 would have to collect more signatures in order to be safely on the ballot in Arizona. They have plenty of time to continue gathering signatures in Arizona, though, because the deadline for turning them in is not until August. So altogether, adding Hawaii and Georgia to my list that will have RFK on the ballot in November, he now has a total of four states. This includes Utah and New Hampshire, where he's already been approved for the ballot. I have one more Kennedy ballot access story this week. On Thursday, ballot access news reported that Kennedy is suing the Maine Secretary of State for revoking his permission to have ballot access petitioners gather signatures at polling places on Super Tuesday, March 5th, when Maine, along with a lot of other states, holds its primary election for the major party candidates. Kennedy got access to the general election ballot in New Hampshire, by that same strategy of having petitioners gather signatures at the polls during that state's primary election. Cornell West also reported progress in obtaining ballot access. He made this announcement earlier today. It is our belief that God specifically orchestrated this time for Dr. Cornell West to run for president of these United States. Today, I want to present to you our candidate for the office of president of these United States, Dr. Cornell West. Dear brother, both Chris and John Nellums have been visionary and courageous leaders in the great state of South Carolina. I am deeply humbled, I am deeply honored 
And yes, I come out of the legacy of Shiloh Baptist Church of Martin Luther King Jr. and Fannie Lou Hamer, so we connect our calling and our vocation to our service to the least of these, to those wrestling with mass incarceration, those wrestling with poverty, those wrestling with a military budget that is bloated, but when it comes to health care for all and education for all and safe neighborhoods for all, they can't find a penny. That's the tradition that produced me, and that's why I am so profoundly blessed to accept this grand endorsement. In accepting the nomination of the United Citizens Party of South Carolina, West is assured ballot access in that state. The United Citizens Party is a small party that was established in 1969 to elect black candidates to office because at that time the Democratic Party in the state didn't nominate black candidates. Uh, since that time in the more recent decades, it's used its presidential nomination to help boost the candidacies of independent and third party candidates, including Ross Perot and um, Ralph Nader. By adding South Carolina to Alaska and Oregon, West now has ballot access in a total of three states. In all three, he gained access by becoming the nominee of a minor political party without a national party affiliation. So what's happening in the major party primaries? Today is the last day of voting for the Republican South Carolina primary. Polling indicates that Donald Trump is going to beat Nikki Haley by a large margin, even though Haley was the governor of South Carolina from 2011 to 2017. The 538 poll aggregator of ABC News shows Trump with about 62% of Republican voter support in South Carolina and Haley with about 34%. Earlier this week, Haley called a press conference, and here's a short bit from what she had to say. Some of you, perhaps a few of you in the media, came here today to see if I'm dropping out of the race. Well, I'm not. I'm fighting for what I know is right, and I don't care what the party leaders and political elites want. I'll keep fighting until the American people close the door. That day is not today, and it won't be on Saturday, not by a long shot. The presidential primaries have barely begun. Just three states have voted. Three. That's it. After this weekend, we'll be at four. That's not a lot. In the 10 days after South Carolina, another 21 states and territories will vote. People have a right to have their voices heard. And they deserve a real choice, not a Soviet-style election where there's only one candidate and he gets 99% of the vote. Voters in both parties are also voting this week in the Michigan primary, which ends on Tuesday. In Michigan, the 538 poll aggregator again shows Haley trailing behind Trump, this time with Trump at about 80% support and Haley at 20. On the Democratic side, it looks like the biggest challenger to Joe Biden is a campaign to have people vote uncommitted instead of voting for him. The ballot for Michigan voters has five options. Marion Williamson, who recently suspended her campaign, Joe Biden, Dean Phillips, uncommitted, and casting a write-in vote. The Listen to Michigan campaign is urging people to vote for uncommitted to send a message to Biden that a majority of Michigan Democrats reject his funding of Israel's war on Palestinians in Gaza. The Listen to Michigan campaign is being backed by over 30 elected Democratic officials in Michigan, where Biden's Israel policy is widely unpopular, especially among young adults and the large Arab American community. Last Saturday, Congressional Representative Rashida Tlaib posted a video on X asking Democrats to vote uncommitted. It is important, as you all know, to not only march against the genocide, not only make sure that we're calling our members of Congress and local electeds and passing city resolutions all throughout our country, it is also important to create a voting block, something that is a bullhorn to say enough is enough. We don't want a country that supports war, wars and bombs and destruction. We want to support life. We want to stand up for every single life killed in Gaza. 
I want you to think of El Shama. I want you to think of Rima. I want you to think of Sidra. I want you to think of all of the amazing young children and the people. Again, lives were lost in Gaza. This is the way you can raise our voices. Don't make us even more invisible. Right now, we feel completely neglected, neglected and just unseen by our government. If you want us to be louder, then come here and vote uncommitted. After Michigan, there aren't any more major party contests until next Saturday when the Republicans hold their caucuses in Idaho. So that's it for this week. If you got anything out of this show, you can hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave comments below, and I read all of them and respond to many of them. And finally, uh, share it with your friends. You can also find this video version of the podcast on Rumble as well as an audio version on streaming platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts, as well as others. So if you prefer to listen rather than watch, you can take a look for it on your favorite podcasting uh, platform. Uh, if you'd like to help the show financially, no amount is too small. You'll find a PayPal secure donation link at the end of the description of the program. Uh, thanks to those of you who have already sent in donations. Those of you who say they like my shirts have outvoted the one person who said I should use his donation to buy a new shirt, so I'm not going to be using any donations to buy a new shirt. <laughs> uh, please come again next week where you can see me wearing one of my old shirts, and uh, I, I hope to hear from you in the comments below. So, bye. With ease I see the chains are breaking We gained our focus, the moves we're making We'll prove to determine our self-worth As a passenger on this vehicle earth